Uh, along with the carpets, we've got new cubicles in. They'll be in July 8th and 9th. Um, they'll look really nice downstairs, kind of bring downstairs up to the level that upstairs is. So uh, people down there, uh, if you're not down there now, you're going to want to be. So um, that's going to be good. We're going to have uh, some new lights coming in as well, get that updated down, down there, and uh, some new window treatments also. So um, just kind of have your uh, eyes out for those, and um, sorry for any inconvenience it may cause. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, come to me or Brian or Rachel. Uh, if you have any complaints, you can direct those to Hunter because he's not here. So, <laughs> so uh, Jeremy has, has officially nicknamed the carpet downstairs the, uh, the Bill, Bill Cosby sweater carpet. Uh, so that's going to get changed out. Uh, it's, 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 you're starting to see the pathways in it that have been worn after years of, uh, of use. So that's good. So if you have a cube downstairs, you should have gotten a note, I think, yesterday from Rachel. If you did not receive an email from Rachel, please talk to her about that she's got a little bit more detailed schedule so uh we want to make sure that y'all are uh that y'all are taken care of uh, and we'll be in touch with each of you individually as well uh just about some more details on that uh how's the market what are y'all seeing who sold something in the last week nice. <coughs> what's the cool who had who had the best sale like coolest house <laughs> kind of. anybody ever really lame one Keep selling houses for cash. Bingo. Emily had a work too. Is there a line item on the settlement statement for donation uh, to the campaign? Uh, <laughs> I thought that was like line 402 or something. The or, donation is at my personal check-in. Well, I was wearing my t-shirt the other day with pride, so. Woo. <laughs> I should have worn it today, shouldn't I? Uh, anybody else have any, any market updates they've seen? Going to be weird, good. All right, Rachel holding steady, uh, four percent, three seven five and three five. So, uh, oops, I messed that up. That's four percent. Sorry about that. Uh, but that is uh, so they've been they've been steady same same this week as they were last week. So they had a little bit of a dip. We got below four, and now we're just cruising for it. Still pretty incredible, though, right? If you look at rates, I was looking up some historical his, historical rates. Uh, you know what they got to in like 1980 or 81 or 82? 18.66%. Scary stuff. Uh, yeah. What's the source of these rates? The source of these rates is uh, this county Eddie back there. So I'm not pulling them out of my uh, arm. <laughs> Fixed. Bingo. All right, tools. Boost. Y'all heard about Boost a few times. Today, we have 261 total campaigns. That means that either 261 <laughs> listings or uh, you all have additionally boosted the same listing. So there's been 261 listing campaigns. That's gotten almost 600,000 views in the last month and a half of your listings, of those listings. Almost 27,000 people have clicked on them. It's pretty impressive. That's like 50 days. It's insane. So that's like 500 clicks a day. There's a lot of activity out there. Uh, and that's generated over 2,000 leads. Um, has anybody heard the marketing rule called the, called the uh, rule of seven that I misspelled just to throw David Pan off a little bit? See if you drop that. What's the rule of seven? It's on the screen if you want to know. So it says, that's the rule that says that people need to come across something seven times before they really start noticing it and taking action, right? So I think I've said this six times, so without further ado, I'll say this seventh. Our goal is to increase your income by how much? 25% by the end of when? This year. This year, that's right. Uh, do you think that's easy? Probably not that easy. No, it's not, but it's also not impossible. So you are the key to making that happen. It requires you taking action on simple ideas. If you need some ideas, talk to me, talk to your broker, talk to a friend, talk to a colleague, uh, collaborate and get some ideas, but you gotta take action on those ideas. Because, uh, you've heard me say this before, but how can you capitalize on that? One, follow the beliefs. Uh, second, you don't have time to follow up, pass them off, 
And the third, if you're a hungry agent, ask somebody with a listing how you can help them pay, pay them a referral fee and take, take some leads off their hands. Has anybody done that? Who's done that? A few hands? All right, there's still an opportunity. Maybe, maybe it's eight times that it sinks in. <laughs> uh, Boomtown update. All right, so we've got a few things happening with Boomtown. So we've, we've been working with our ambassadors and getting them up to speed. And then over the last week or so, Chris Springsteen in the Hub has emailed every single agent. Uh, if you weren't previously logged in, you have received an email with your username and password. The username is going to be whatever your email at VillageTN is. Almost, almost uh, positive that's going to be what it is. And then uh, if you don't know, if you didn't get it or you lost the email or you deleted it, thought it was spam, just go to, and I'll show you the website in a minute, but it's leads.boomtownroi, which stands for return on investment, dot com. And, uh, and then you can go through and, and just do a wash your password, reset your password. The first thing you want to do, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, is take some training. So the best way is to do the first three main live webinar training sessions. They occur on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. They have a morning, a 9 a.m. and then an 11 a.m. session. So you can do each of those. Uh, that's the very best way to commit to at least three hours in one hour chunks. And it's fun, it's engaging. They, they will call on you and uh, it's, again, it's a webinar, but it's, it's, it's engaging and live. Next thing I would challenge you to do is to set up e-alerts. Who uses auto-notify on those racks? All right, so this an e-alert is the exact same thing, except way better. Because what happens when you send a buyer or something on real tracks and they want to save it? Oh, that's right. That's right, they can't. Because those racks doesn't do that. So Boomtown does. They can save it. You set them up for an account, they can start saving properties. And we're going to go through in a second, and I'll show you what that looks like again. But uh, another tip that you can do is so you can see what they're what they're looking at, what they're saving, um, and they may also tell you that they're looking at one thing, but really they're looking at another. I'm going to pick on my mother-in-law; she's an active buyer right now, and then I've got her set up on this, and she's kind of guinea pig. But uh, but I think she lied to me just a little, just a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to show you how I found that out. Uh, so set up monthly alerts, so you can do things, with real tracks you can do things what, instantly or daily or twice a day, right? You can do things with this, instantly, daily, weekly, twice a month, or monthly. What a cool idea to go through and send your buyers, or your past your buyers, who are now potential sellers, or owners, just do a little recap, a monthly market update, and it just gives them a quick recap, once a month, one email a month, from you automatically, of all the properties in there in their uh, neighborhood. Is that helpful? Easy, it's, it's easy, you'll be able to do it in two minutes. So I would challenge you to do that. Uh, so if you go to leaps.boomtownroi.com, and I'll show you that site in big print in a minute, this is what it looks like. And again, take the training because it can be overwhelming, but this is Sandra, this is my mother-in-law, she's very nice. Uh, and so she, <coughs> I did this this morning, and it says right here, I'll zoom in a little bit, but it says that she's hot, for Holly, she's <laughs> very beautiful, um, that she's a buyer and a seller, because she wants to buy something and then she has something to sell. Uh, I last communicated with her through Boomtown seven days ago, <coughs> but that doesn't even count the e alert, so she's getting, she's getting <coughs> a lot of some of our e mail through Boomtown. I've called her through Boomtown twice. Uh, and look at that, she was last in the site. So I did this, there's not a timestamp on here, I don't think, but I did this at about six this morning. She was an hour ahead of me, but she was on the site. When I pulled it up, she was last on the site four minutes ago. It's kind of neat, because she received an e-alert. I guarantee you, she, looked, she got the e-alert. She was checking her email in the morning, she clicked on it, and was browsing on the site. Some other people, this is me, just sort of a fake account and me playing around on it. Some other people that are, that's a past client, I set him up on a monthly search. And uh, he obviously got an email and was on the site a few days ago. So it's a great way to engage people and pay attention to what they're doing uh, when they're on your site. So Sandra, if you click on Sandra, this is what she looks like, what her profile looks like. You got her email address, it finds, it automatically finds her social media accounts based on her emails. You wanna see where her social media accounts are, you can do that. 
So Sandra, this is where Sandra, I think, was not being totally truthful with me. Totally up front with me. So Sandra told me that she was looking up to 400000 But this system has now identified that really her average price range is two ninety seven. dollars She's been to the website 61 times. She's looked at 21 properties. She hasn't favored any. Um, that might scare her, but a lot of people do favor them. And this was a few minutes later, which she last logged in eight minutes, eight minutes ago. <coughs> so if you look here, this is where I, I discovered that maybe she was being untruthful. She said she was looking at up to 400,000, you know, ish. But really, she's only looked at 10 houses, 10% of the houses she's looked at have been over 400,000, so that makes sense. 38% have been between 300 and 400, but almost half have been in the 200s. Is that helpful to be able to see that stuff? Yeah. So if I see a house, a property that, that she's looking at, it's in the, you know, she's looking for a condo, an older condo, so there are plenty available in that range. And it's 350 or 375, no matter how nice it is, chances are she's probably not going to be that loud by me, even though she told me she's going up to, to, to 400000 So I'm going to spend time focusing more on listening to come soon's in the 200s. Make sense? So the e-alerts right down here, you can see those. They are, uh, <coughs> this is what they look like. You can do a map search just like you do in Realtrax. And then put a price range down here. You can put in all kinds of criteria, like minimum of two bedrooms, minimum one and a half bath. It's the same stuff. And then you can set it up for instantly or even monthly if you want, which is nice. So that's helpful. So who can who can commit to, to logging in this week and setting up at least one e alert, even if it's for yourself? You'll know I'm asking you. This is our last meeting of the month, but we'll do it in, in July. Uh, so the last thing is really cool. So this is so all of that is included with a free account, right? So we pay Boomtown a big chunk of money to have access for free accounts for everybody. <coughs> they still charge us fifty dollars a month per person if you go on the full the full deal. And I'm not going to go through all the, the specifics, but one thing that's pretty cool about the full one is this thing called the Now Wall, which is right up here. And the Now Wall is. It shows you, you can see what it looks like right over there. But it uses predictive analytics to track who is doing what and starts to yell at you when you should call somebody. So at this point, she'd been on the site 23 minutes ago and it pops her up on my now wall because it said that she was looking at the same property for a second time in 24 hours. Ross, another past client of ours, viewed a listing from multiple locations and looked at a property the second time in 24 hours. His son, John, looked at the property for the third time. So I want to see what those are. I can click and see exactly what properties those are. Trip, he looked at a property the third time, his wife, Mary Beth, she was just browsing, it looks like. Those are less, less uh, high, but it just lets you know, hey, we're noticing some behaviors. You should follow up with these people. So if you're dealing with a lot of different people, it can, it can help you know who to call it. That's a nurse. So nurture, so there's different there's different categories. So hot, you know, hot nurture would be uh, somebody that's just, you know, they're maybe three months out, six months out, somewhere in that range. Um, and then there's a watch category, which is a uh, just like I'm kind of watching you, but I'm not really do do something with you probably. So this is the website, leads.boomtownroi.com. Uh, I'm 90% sure it's linked from the market, but you can do that. If you can't find the login with your email, just use the at lowcn.com email address and request a password reset and go from there. So thanks for committing to that. Any questions on that? Hunter's not here today, so I didn't really talk too much. So. Village tip of the week. Oh, David. David, it's your turn. Where's David? There you are. A grand evangelist. Um, evangelizing again, also with a warning. Evangelists will warn you, or the ones I grew up with did. <laughs> Zach, Zach will check your typos. He checked me on a listing. Um, it was a little payback for something Virginia Rogan actually did to you. I was just complicit. 
Um, anyway, so I misspelled table. You can't be too careful. No, it's not Talba. Talba, yeah, typical. I have dyslexic fingers. Okay, today we're going to do two things. We're doing another one of these little teaser things that is one of the things that drives Zach particularly bonkers. And uh, it, it works on me too. And, um, oh yeah. Um, I've forgotten what it was. Um, I sometimes get this wrong, I struggle with it too. So, who versus whom? We are back, if you remember the first one that we did, we are talking about between you and me and between you and I, and we're talking about pronouns. Pronouns are words that stand in for nouns. Who and whom are both words that stand for a person or uh, an animal, perhaps, um, depending on how you feel about animals. Um, but we're also talking about objective and subjective case. Remember, something can be the subject of a sentence or the object of a sentence, and that can be true of a pronoun. So, who is the objective case of that pronoun? It is usually interrogatory, meaning it's asking a question uh, in this case. So, who are you? That's a correct sentence. That is asking who you are. Who am I speaking to? is, unfortunately, even though we all say it and write it that way, is incorrect because that is used in the objective case. The basic sentence here is, I am speaking. So, I am speaking to whom, not who. So, to whom I am speaking is correct. Whom am I speaking to is also correct, even though they sound really weird and we never speak that way. So, um, this may not be the best for our general real estate practice, but it's true, and so you have to just deal with the truth. The general rule is that who sounds like him, and if you can use him, and it doesn't sound totally weird, you're probably using it right. Uh, if you can't, then use who. Um, who or whom, if it sounds right, use it. Um, and this is one of those, I'm gonna, when we go into the longer thing after this, there's going to be a big slide at the beginning. Here's a preview that says there are always going to be exceptions to every single rule, and we can't be perfectly grammatically correct all the time, but we have to know what the rules are, or you can't do it right. Furthermore, one more thing, I'm not just going to hammer people about grammar. I think we were asked by one of our own to do this, the lovely and talented uh, David Bankley. And um, I'm not sure what his objectives were, but we're going to talk about how you confront the blank page. Because there are people who talk to me all the time about how do I get my newsletter started? What do I write about? How do I do that? So we're going to talk a, a bit about actually like doing some writing in addition to writing right, which is incorrect. Writing rightly is correct. <laughs> That's good, that's good. Sorry, right, so, so Bo Diddley had it all wrong, right? Yes. Who do you love? It should be uh, whom. Whom do you love? So the answer can be, I love that. If the answer could be him, then you should use whom. Mm -hmm. Correct. And for me, him do you love would be correct if I could have a day. Who do you love? I love him, God. <laughs> all right. Um, that's helpful. So y'all come to the class. Uh, David's, David's been uh, working on this. And so David, David Payne's been working on this. David Bigley did bring this up. He said, you know, I see a lot of other agents at other companies, of course, uh, send emails that are just really not very professional. And writing descriptions are not very professional. I know we've, we've harped on this a little bit, but, uh, but it is important to, to you're selling, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of real estate or sometimes millions of dollars worth of real estate, and uh, you want to be able to uh, speak appropriately. So we talked about this last week. Showing is better than telling. We said there's a couple easy ways to do this. Some area amenity maps and some drive time maps. And then you could also just show some pictures around the, uh, around the location. So and you can do that. One way to do that is to do walkscore.com and just don't actually put the walk score, but you can uh, click on that map and make it a little bit bigger and uh, save that as an image, a screenshot. So who actually did this? So I went through every single Every single listing this morning. And I think I got everybody, and I'm sure I left somebody out, but, uh, uh, but I think I got everybody almost to do it. Crystal Morgan did it. Look at that. And this was not the cover photo, I was just clicking through it. Took a little screenshot, so good job, Crystal. Sean Huffman had some pictures of Belmont, her property's near Belmont. And uh, 
Let's see, Brian Solstice did that. He actually went fancy and had a designer make a, a, an even cooler map uh, than, than, the, than the knockoff one. Uh, lots of people in the Civil Living team did. Uh, so Zach Bernier, Bill Anderson, Mark Deutschman, and uh, Deborah Volley. There's a picture of a neighbor's restaurant, picture of the Sound Stadium of where the property is, picture of Driven Haynes, and then the Farmer's Market. Lot, Zach Phillips had a really good map uh, near Gallatin that showed kind of where it is in relation to a lot of other, other important things. Tony Myers had a good one on the lake. I thought that was pretty cool because it shows the lake and all the stuff to do. And uh, Todd Bradley had one, or a few. Jamie had a couple of them, showing uh, they showed a bunch of pictures of Green Hills. That was in Whole Foods, the 100% organic zone. And, uh, and then Kenny Hetzler had one. And John Fairhead, you said you had one too, right? <coughs> Maybe. <coughs> I might have missed it, so sorry. So anyway, y'all come on up and get yourself a book. At the end. I got a whole stack of them for you. So, uh, so that's it. So I would, again, I challenge y'all to do that. Just, just don't forget about how many people are moving in from out of town. If you want to see what it feels like, go to another city or go to Realtor.com or RPR and start searching for homes in another city and see how confused you get pretty quickly if you're actually pretending to look. You don't really know where things are or what's nearby, but when you start seeing photos or maps or some other bearing that shows those three words, location, 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 it can remind you where you are and why you should buy that. So a few things we've been working on. Let's see, he, uh, one, uh, so I didn't talk to these guys, but I'm not sure if they're here or not, but they're gonna get made fun of a little bit. They can handle it. Uh, so we think you're beautiful, fun, full of life and unique. We wanna show that to the world. There might be a better way. Here's what some of our lovely customers see when they now click through our existing website. They see this guy, <laughs> pretty, pretty hot stuff. And then I don't know if y'all ever noticed this, but I just came across this, and I'm sure it was a thing, but it was, it was funny. Um, you hover over it, and you get this. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, Brent, Brent shocked me and, and made me smile at the same time. <laughs> that was about $600 in his pocket. <laughs> but David said he had a loan to him to, to take the picture of him, so I'm but, um, so anyway, one thing we're going to do is uh, we love Purple Love and Fun, uh, but just as we roll out a new website, we're going to offer new headshots. If anybody wants a new headshot, we're going to offer those in July after the sales meeting. We're going to cover the cost of that. And uh, we're probably going to do them off-site just to make it uh, a little bit different, but um, they uh, will tell you a little bit more details about that. So if you want a new headshot, we'll have a sign-up sheet, so just stay tuned for that. Has anybody used these VRS template markets? Mark VRS wire templates? You got one, Scott? Yeah. Anybody else? Megan, good work. Is it pretty easy to use? It was easy, it works. Good. Um, all right, so this is helpful. Colin, you want to talk about this? If anyone's logged into VMET recently, on your dashboard, up here at the top left, it's going to start tracking your cap. So here, if you're on a 70-30 plan with a 20,000 cap, it's going to show where you are in relation to your goal. It's not going to show the dollars to you, that's where you find that under pipeline. But here now on the dashboard, you can keep track of your cap. We still don't have the ability to put it on your agent bills. When you, um, when you get your, your paid stubs and things from Susan, you can't add it there, but we are able to have it here, so hopefully this will help everybody keep track of where they are in relation to their cap. I love that. So if you all see Susan Turner and Edie, say thanks to them, because they worked on that. Is that helpful? Is that good? Do you all like that? I like that. Hey, Susan. Susan, I didn't realize you were here. Do you want to come talk about it? Just come say hi. Susan, really beautiful today. She won't come home. We love you, Susan. Thanks for paying us all. Um, all right, so we rolled out a, a new listing consultation package, just an updated one uh, for those that we had a lot of requests for them. We've had a lot of requests for an updated buyer one as well. 
Uh, I've got it about 95% done, at least the first draft. And then what I've, what I've done with the listing one is a lot of people have been giving me feedback and so I've been collecting that. We're gonna have a second round. So I'm gonna roll this out probably this week as soon as I get the last edits back. And, uh, and then you all can start using it, walking through it, we can do a class on it. And then if you want to, uh, if you want to give the feedback on it, we'll, we'll update it. But I'll give you a quick overview of what it is here. So opening page, a little bit about village, and then uh, just office locations, kind of where we are. So this would be you'd sit down with the buyer for the first time in the office. Uh, you can customize a piece about you. Uh, a little bit about the village fund our partners. And then a questionnaire. So this is just, if anything, this is a questionnaire to, to remind you of, of uh, to take some notes and to ask some questions. And again, if, you, if one of these pages you don't like, pull it out, it doesn't matter. You don't have to use this exact same thing. Um, but I would love your feedback if you have additional input. Uh, one is, do you own your current home? Home, how long have you owned it? How many homes have you owned uh, over your lifetime? Because if somebody's bought and sold 27 homes, they're probably gonna be pretty efficient at doing this, and they don't, they don't wanna spend all the time maybe drawing on about stuff, right? Whereas if it's their first home, they really need some handholding. Uh, when you purchase your current home, what was the process you used to find that home? How did that process work for you? Are you making changes this time around? Have y'all ever asked that question before? Because you saw that they bought a home with another agent and then now they're talking to you and you're not quite sure why, you don't really know how to ask? <clears throat> ask that question. How did the process work out? What would you change this time around? It will give you an earful if they had a bad experience. Um, and will remind you of all the things you should not do. Uh, and all the things you should do if you want to work with them well. Uh, are you familiar with how real estate works in this market? On a scale of one to 10, just being started, how ready are you to move, ASAP, uh, or, you know, 10 being ready uh, to move as soon as possible. Uh, where are you in the process? Just trying to understand the timeline. So then a little bit about the buying process. You know, five steps, prepare, getting pre-approved, uh, searching, narrowing over internet and email. We're gonna have a page in here about uh, Boomtown and how we can create an account for you and how that works and that's where we'd love you to do your search uh, on the, village, the new village website. Uh, you offer the inspection of the closing and how that typically goes 45 to 60 days. So you can spend some time there talking about all the contingencies and earnest money. Uh, I didn't, we didn't detail all this out because it's, it's really just a guide to show, uh, show you where, where you can talk about things. But I think it's important to talk about, one, how you get paid, what the fees are that will incur. Well, that would be upfront costs, like earnest money, inspection costs, maybe appraisal costs, et cetera. Uh, some market Info, this is kind of neat. This is looking at the home market, the HPI, the, the home price index with interest rates overlaid. So that's, that's where it was about 18% in 1981. It just shows that they're down here, but also creeping up just a little bit from the low point in 2016, 2017. And then reminds them that for every 1% change in interest rate, their borrowing power decreases by about how much? By about 10%. It's big stuff, right? So they want to keep the same monthly payment and they have a $200,000 loan at a 4% rate, which is what they are today, that's about a $955 a month payment. <coughs> if rates went up to 5%, in order to keep that same budget at $955 a month, instead of being able to borrow $200,000, they would only be able to borrow $177,000. So in an increasing rate market, which they're fluctuating right now, but it's important to talk to buyers about that. Yeah, no, I think I'm gonna wait a year or so. Okay, well, just so you know, if prices increase and rates also increase, then you're not gonna go afford what you could afford now. Uh, Pre-approval talks about how important it is to get pre-approved. Uh, 10 things to avoid when applying for a loan. Has anybody had a deal fall apart at the last minute because somebody financed the car or did something like? Yeah, so it just gives you an opportunity to talk about those things. Uh, making the offer, just the, the offer process, again, Another, another little opportunity for earnest money. And the closing table, what happens at the closing table? Uh, the 85% perfect home. Everybody wants the 100% perfect home, but uh, it's it's not out there always in your price range. And I've been setting the expectation for the 85% perfect home. This gives you an opportunity to write down what they want, both features and benefits, right? Because people don't buy their what, they buy their, they buy their why, right? So they buy the benefits, they buy, so if they're sitting there on a three bedroom, well tell me why you want that third bedroom or that second or third bedroom, you're a single person. What do you use them for? Well, I want one for gas and one for an office. Okay, so would a two bedroom with an office work just as well? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, great, you just opened up the market to a whole new 
uh, area. And then at the end, how are properties priced? Just talking about price, condition, location gives you the opportunity to say that you can have, you know, an incredible location and it's a beautiful house. It's going to be more expensive, right? If they want to do a little bit of work and still have a wonderful location, they can sacrifice on price a little bit. So it gives you the opportunity to ask them what kind of work they want to do. And then just some uh, some washroom stuff to, to leave behind as an appendix. Got it? Is that helpful? Okay, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send out, as soon as I get, there's one update I'm waiting on, and as soon as I get that in the next day or two, I'll send it out to everybody, and then I love your feedback, try it, use it, and then let me know. Uh, broker opens. Any broker opens this week? Brian, what do you got?
on that one too. I like it. You know what? I didn't I didn't I didn't go through the ones that were under contract. So did all the right things. All right, Fred, what do you got? All right, two. Well, first, there's a couple problems with this. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a coming soon. It, it's like a belated birthday. It went on this weekend, this past weekend, went on the market. And the address is actually, what you see there is my home address. I'm not selling my own home. Uh, but, but in the, the rapid hurry to get that up, that's what came out of my brain. So um, while working that, maybe I would actually, I would probably sell my house there. But this house, it's an 18 it's a grand 18 name, it's Victoria. What's the address? I'll put it in. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 1113 Howell. Howell Square, that's what I wrote. Uh, yeah, 1113 Howell Street. And uh, it's in East Nashville. It's a grand 18, uh, 80s Victorian. It's got 12 foot ceilings, beautiful moldings, 10 foot pocket doors. You really need to check this house out. We staged it completely. Uh, and it's got a guest quarters over the uh, two car garage in the back. All right. And if you want, I can just finish my second one. Uh, Do it. That is uh, down there. It is on. Uh, oh, that's weird. Why is it coming those in? I didn't like those. I swear to God. <laughs> uh, it, I'm serious, I did that right. Uh, it, it's uh, 3217 Avenal. How do you spell that? A V E N A L. Okay. And uh, it is a, it's a cute little house, it's remodeled, it's got a really fun addition and screen and porch uh, and uh, upstairs area that's open and it's at a great price point. That's about what the price is going to be. We're going to set the price this week. It'll go on this week, and uh, both those homes will have open houses this weekend. Where is Avenal? Avenal is in Glencliff area. If you go out Ellensville Road, uh, there's a sweet area there uh, south of Thompson Lane off Ellensville. You turn left on Fuss Avenue by the, uh, well, no, turn left on uh, Antioch Pike and go down to Avenal. I have no, I'm going to rent a lot of Fuss right there, too, so I can get back on there. Off it's, it's, it's off Antioch Pike. Is it a slide? I mean, the rental's up too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 3217, if you go North Hill Road south from Thompson Lane, take a left by, uh, it's also next to the uh, auto parts store there. Go down to Avenal, it's on the left. Is that, does anybody have an idea where I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, who else? Megan, you got one? And Aaron? Megan's right there. Let me give Megan the mic. I have 1117 B Sharp Avenue in Eastwood Neighbors in East Nashville. It's one block from Pearl Divers, Pelican and Pigs, Lowdown Coffee, and a bunch of other restaurants, and about a mile from Five Points. It's in Laughlin GPC. It's a newer construction, hardwood throughout, design and finishes, um, two master suites, three <coughs> bedrooms, three full baths, and a very walkable location. It's coming later this week at 4.50. All right. Where did Erin go? Jane, since I'm here, she's not here. So she's got one. Megan, you want to tell us what Erin has? Erin has 4609, is that 46? 4609, Elkins Avenue in Silver Park, 1920s Cottage, 2530 square feet. Three bedrooms, two and a half baths, open floor plan, tall ceilings, master up and down or down. Lovely front porch and screen back porch. Steps from Richland Park, Caddy Heath, and M. Alvarez, and it's 660. All right. Anybody else have one? Can I say something? Yeah, Scott. Uh, I had a broker open last week, and thanks to all the village people that came out, I want to say that I put it everywhere on, the, on all the email lists and everything, and village, no other agency said village came. I don't know about that, but I sent it out like agent wide, but drones, droves of, is that right? Droves? droves. Lots of village agents came out, so thanks to Lake for that. And I'm, just, I'm going to give away two boat outings on the lake, and I haven't done any, so I apologize. But uh, I meant to bring a bucket with a bunch of cards, but I forgot. I just forgot today. So anyway, I'm going to do that. So every, all you guys that showed up, you know, I'm still going to do a little drawing, go out on Percy Creek or Old Dick or something like that. So anyway, thanks to Village. So, so all right. Good work. Well, good stuff. All right, so we're uh, trying to keep this short and sweet. So, what uh, any takeaways y'all have today? Any other announcements, takeaways? I'm excited about the seller consultation. Excited about the buyer consultation package. Seller, uh, yeah. 
buyer seller, you know. Oftentimes buyers become sellers uh, at the same time. What else? You like the VMAN caps. So log into VMAN and see what your, your, your <coughs> pathway is under your cap. Uh, what else? What are rates today? What's a 30 year fixed rate? 4%. Four. Four. Four What's a 15 year fixed? Three and a half. Is it three and a half? Three and a half, I think. Or is it 3.75? 3.75. And now I confuse everybody. So 30 years, four, 15 year is 3.75, and the four one arm, or five one arm is three and a half. Just need to stay a step down. All right, so right after this, we're going to learn how to write rightly, correctly, uh, with uh, David Payne. So thanks so much for coming. If, uh, if y'all have a um, cubicle, don't forget, if you didn't get the email from Rachel, if you have a cubicle here, uh, talk to her and ask her to send that to you again, just so we're all on the same page with exactly what needs to happen. But thank you for coming. Have a good week.